Salutations, ladies and gentlemen, the Knife Raven here, back again with another video, and in today's video, well, I have quite the odd specimen for you today. Now, it's very well documented that I have a bit of an obsession for Openel knives, among other things, and, well, the Openel design is a very simple one, but it's very time-tested and works very, very well. This particular example is a number eight in walnut wood and stainless steel. It has a simple aesthetic to it and is very pleasing to the eye. Nice in the hand. It isn't too big and it isn't too small. It has a good lock, a thin blade making it excellent for your daily slicing duties, and the steel is easy enough to sharpen. Now, this is a very reliable knife, the Open L number eight. And there is a contender, however. In fact, there are quite a few contenders, as the Open L has been around since the 1890s and is very much a popular design, and particularly with impersonators. There have been many companies that have tried to copy this knife, some successful and some unsuccessful. Now, as someone who understands that imitation and mimicry are the core to everything, really, you see, when you're first born, and you're, you're learning how to talk, you're learning how to walk and how to act. You're learning from your parents, your grandparents, your friends, your teacher in school, and your classmates. In the end, there is no such thing as originality, as everything stems from mimicry. Now, whether you choose to believe that or not is irrelevant, and I can believe it to an extent, but I do think that having a similar design is actually a good idea, as the Open L is very time-tested, and it proves that a simple friction folder with a wood handle and a metal lock works fairly well as an everyday-use knife. And so, not too long after, the Old Bear came into being. The Old Bear is an Italian version of the Open L, and this one is also in walnut wood, this is the medium size, and it has a carbon blade as opposed to stainless, although it is offered in stainless. And you can see there's quite a bit of patina here. There's a bit of scratching. This knife has been sharpened a bit. And there is a brass ring instead of stainless steel. And you can see that while similar, there are some very noticeable differences here. The stainless steel ring moves into place and prevents the blade from closing, whereas with the brass ring, it's actually fixed, and there's this individual metal piece that operates separate from the ring and blocks the blade. But they both have the same, well, use, if you will, which is to prevent blade from closing. Now, both of these are very nice knives, and they're both very similar in size and, well, quality. One from Italy, and one from France. Now, today, I'll be taking a look at something very different, although slightly similar. And this is another knife from Turkey. Well, it's a bit bigger, but this... I'll just move these to the side for now. This is a Turkish take on this style of friction folding knife with a locking ring. Much closer in appearance and style to the old bear than the open L. You can see that the brass ring is very close, almost an identical design, although size is different. And they work in the exact same way. Slide the ring out of the way open your blade up, and then slide the ring piece to the side, which will prevent the blades from closing. So these are very similar in their design, and I will do comparisons later, but today I'll be talking about this knife. Now, this is stainless steel as opposed to carbon. It's a very subtle clip point design with a very, very, um, I guess you could say, slight recurve up here. It is not the traditional clip point that you would expect 
with a very pronounced dip. Even this isn't a particularly pronounced one. I think of the three, the Old Bear is the most prominent in its dip. But they definitely all have a similar style, with this one being the least noticeable. It also has a thicker blade. Granted, it is a larger knife, but you can see that the blade stock is significantly larger. And there's probably about mm, two millimeters of thickness on this, whereas these, it would probably be mm, not quite a millimeter. These are very thin blades, very excellent for slicing. However, this is a much beefier blade. Beefy blades do have their advantages, as they are often stronger and less likely to bend or, God forbid, snap. But this does not mean that it's entirely a good thing, as having a thinner blade means that it can cut through, say, paper and cardboard, and also food, a lot easier and smoother than a blade with particularly wide stock. Now, the quality on this knife is quite good. Blade play is non-existent in any direction. Again, you have to make sure that the ring is all the way shut, or pushed to the side, I should say, because if it's halfway closed, there will be some play. But if you make sure that it is completely um, safe, if you will, there should be no movement in the blade whatsoever. Again, the brass was high polished, but it has already patinaed simply from fingerprints, as brass will. You should be careful if you don't like your brass gaining a patina or tarnish, you should keep it polished every now and then. The blade is satin finished, there is no real mirror polish or anything here. Very simple, it's a simple style to the open -out. Blade finish, very close. The handle is obviously a wood handle. I don't know what kind of wood. Turkish walnut is a particularly popular choice among handles, not only for, for knives from Turkey, but also for uh, firearms. It's one of the most popular handles on uh, shotguns and hunting rifles and the like. So this very well could be Turkish walnut, but I do not have any sources to back that. Here it is next to a knife I know for a fact is walnut. This is American walnut from, well, America. But granted, it is an Italian-made knife, so this wood was not grown in Italy. But the walnut here is a lot smoother, has a much closer grain texture, and is a lot darker. It could almost pass as ebony. Whereas this is a bit more of a coarse grain, and it's a bit lighter in its color. Granted, this knife has been carried and just generally owned for about two years now, and has had a lot of oil put on it, being a carbon knife, and oil can change the color of your wood handles from a lighter shade to a darker shade. So this could just simply be the oil, but this is probably just a darker piece of walnut altogether, and that is under the assumption that this is walnut to begin with. The reason I brought this open L out as opposed to any of the others was this is also a piece of walnut. And you can see that this is a significantly lighter piece compared to the old bear. But these are indeed both the same genus of tree. Which is very interesting, but again, with natural materials you can have significant changes despite it's technically being similar, but again, both of these are walnut. So whether or not this is walnut, I am unsure, but it is some kind of natural hardwood. There's no sign of resin or stain here whatsoever. It seems like a natural piece. Uncertain of what type, but I'm, I'm guessing it's walnut. But do not quote me on that. The blade sticks out enough that there is very... Um, there's quite a bit of room to pinch it, but that does bring up the really the only flaw I can point out with this knife. If it is even a flaw, the nail nick is, well, it's odd, to say the least. Now, this maker, I've noticed, they tend to 
instead of having nail nicks, they have nail cutouts, like a Spyderco, for example, where it's an ambidextrous opener where you can use your nail to open it on the left or the right side of the blade. And by the looks of this, they were going to punch out this metal piece so that you'd have the notch, but they only got part of the way through doing it and left it for some reason. Now, by the looks of it, because it's cut on both sides, they weren't going for a traditional uh, one-side-only nail nick, but rather the notch, or the cutout, but didn't get all the way, well, to punching this piece out, which is quite odd to me. I feel like if you were going to go this far, you go the extra mile, or forget mile, go the extra... <laughs> 10 paces, and you would have yourself a fully functional cutout in your blade. But for whatever reason, um, unbeknownst to me, it remains a half-finished nail notch opening system. Granted, I can't complain because it technically does not affect the usability of this knife whatsoever. Even with poor dexterity, you can absolutely pinch this open with ease. There is no... There's no issue here, there's no slipping of the hand. This is a very significantly protruding blade, and you can get it out with minimal effort. So, functionality-wise, there is no complaint here. But, aesthetic-wise, I, I do believe I have a right to be a little bit annoyed with that, as it just seems a bit odd. Speaking of which, I have been very impressed with this knife, as again, the quality is very nice. Um, the blade is very, very close to being perfectly straight, no warps at all. Centering is perfect. Again, blade play, non-existent. The lockup is very solid, very secure, as these are some of the most secure mechanisms you'll get. The grind, which I don't even know what this would be. I don't know if I'd call it a hollow grind. And I don't know if I'd call it a flat grind either. This is an odd blade grind, but I will tell you the truth. The heft of the blade stock does mean that you get an extra bit of weight when cutting, and it is extremely sharp. This is, I believe, the fresh edge. There was nothing changed here. I didn't put a special edge on it myself. And you can see that they do... They thoroughly make sure that their knives are functional straight out of the workshop, which I very much respect, as that seems to be a dying art, making knives that are, well, actually sharp. And yes, the, the, the sharpness is perfect, I would say 10 out of 10. The grind seems very good, the edge is very clean. Again, blade plays non-existent, the ring fit to the handle is excellent. Um, Again, there, there doesn't seem to be any irregularity or cracking in the wood. The action is as smooth as you'd expect from a friction folder, which is to say there are no ball bearings in here, but at the same time it's much smoother than a slip joint or most lockbacks. So, what can I really say to complain about this knife? Well, that nail nick is the only thing. And unfortunately... The issue with this knife begins at the fact that this knife cost, I believe, 70 Canadian dollars. It was either 70 or 80, I believe this was 70. And the main benefit, now granted, I would like to specify, $70 for a quality knife in today's world is actually still fairly good. You'd pay more for a case and get worse fit and finish. You'd pay mm, probably about twice this for a GEC, and that's if you are lucky and you find one for an okay price. And again, that's if you can find one. And really, it's better than most cheap knives around. I'd say I'd much rather carry this than most Rough Riders or maybe even a Schrade. But... The issue starts when you have knives of an almost identical style for a much better price. Now, I remembered 
when this knife was first reviewed, I, I noticed, I think it was Messer HQ did a video on this, and it was one of the first videos I'd seen of this on the internet. And the main complaint that people had, and the main reason why they choose Openel over Old Bear, aside from the steel, is that Openel was significantly cheaper. And the Old Bear, I think, ran about 25 to 35 US. And even that is fairly good. I got this one for probably about 30 Canadian. I got a fairly good deal on it. But that price for a traditionally made knife of this caliber is still very reasonable. But an Open L could run you 20 to 30. And if you're really lucky and you get the carbon steel model with the beech wood, you could get it for as low as 15 or 12. And that's in Canadian dollars. So the main advantage to these knives and the main reason people justify their simplicity and their lack of um, special finishes and such is always because they're simple peasant knives for really, really good prices. Now, where does that end? Because some were saying that the Antonini Old Bear is already too expensive, and that this is bordering on a mid-range knife. And for some, this absolutely would be. For me, and yes, I'm just probably opulent, I believe that this is a fairly inexpensive knife even still. This, however, for twice the price of this, and more than twice the price of that, I, I don't know if I can, can, can still justify this knife as a whole. And I'm not saying it's a bad knife. In fact, the quality is quite excellent. If, I mean, the old bear, the centering on this, and I know people don't often talk about centering on friction folders, but the centering is quite poor. And the reason that there's a scratch here is because it's actually been scraping against the side of the handle. Yes, there's some sharpening scratches around here, but that main mark right there, that is blade rub against the inside of the handle. This knife doesn't do that, and this was a handmade knife. I believe Openel, Openel is a factory-made knife, and the Old Bear is, I think it is factory-assisted. It's partially machine-made, partially handmade. This would have been shaped out probably by hand, the blade would have been ground by hand, and sharpened by hand, and assembled by hand. So this is a completely handmade knife, and the quality is much, much better. And I really like this knife. I think that its size advantage, it makes for an excellent camp carry. In fact, I bring my leather bag around with me almost everywhere. Um, little spoiler alert, because I'm diabetic, and I need to make sure that I always have glucose with me in case I were to ever drop into a dangerous low. And with my leather bag, I have been uh, taking a liking to bringing this in one of the little pouches, not as a pocket carry, as it's a bit bulky for that, but I just slip it into the pouch in my bag, and I bring it along with me, as it would make for an excellent, I guess, emergency survival knife, as, again, very strong lockup, very, very beefy stock, but at the same time, it has a very fine tapered down edge. This would make an excellent outdoors knife. I could probably suggest this to hunters or outdoorsmen or hikers. This would be a great choice if you were going into the forest. And I'd probably pick it over these two for the size advantage alone, but also the thicker blade stock means that you don't feel like you have to be as light on it, whereas something like this I would be more likely to take on a picnic, not into the wilderness. And I'm sure you still could, and it would absolutely excel at it. But this strikes me as a much heavier use knife. Now, again, for being handmade and having such nice quality and for being so incredibly sharp, brand new, I really, really like this knife, but I just don't understand why this batch, at least, had the, the nail notches not cut out. And it, it doesn't make any sense to me why that would happen. I doubt it was intentional, but I can't see that this passed for quality control if an entire batch of knives didn't have the nail cut out. I mean, imagine receiving a Spyderco without the Spyderco hole. It just would be, it'd be strange. It would be outlandish. It would be preposterous. And 
again, I don't think that's enough to ruin the knife for me. In fact, it does virtually nothing for it. It can still work perfectly well. But I just think that when you're selling a knife at a price this high, for something that is a copy of something like this, you need to go all out and prove that, well, each and every individual feature that is supposed to be with the knife is done well. So, all in all, this is a great knife. I have no real complaints in regards to the quality and the use factor. This is a great knife for carrying. I don't know what steel they use, but whatever it is, they got it very, very sharp. And from the bit I've used it, it hasn't dulled yet. So I'll give you an update if anything changes in that regard. But it's certainly better than this thing for the steel. Uh, this is C67 carbon steel or something like that. It Whatever it is, it doesn't hold an edge for very long. And it's not necessarily fun to sharpen. 12C27 I've talked about before. It's far from bad, but it's far from M390. But it certainly gets the job done. Whatever this is... It works just as good as that, if not better. So whatever steel they have, I I don't know, but it, it works. It absolutely works. So I suppose that's that for this, this knife. I don't have much else to say. Again, the fit and finish is surprisingly good, except for that one very questionable nail notch. Um... Again, it's very clearly a copy of the old bear, but, you know, if it's able to make a better knife than old bear, well, I think that's actually a good thing. I'd be much less likely to be kind to this knife if it was marketed as an old bear, because there's a big difference between a knife very clearly inspired by another knife and just a knockoff. If this said Antonini old bear and it, it turned out to be a fake, I would be much less kind to it, because I don't really appreciate stealing someone else's work and claiming that you were the one who made it. But if you're just taking inspiration and you're wanting to take something someone else did, put your own spin on it and maybe make it better, I absolutely endorse that. And in this case, I think it was done very well. Again, we'll just ignore that, and I'll give this a very solid 8 out of 10. Overall, I doubt you'll be able to find these because, again, this was a farmer's market find, and there's no way you're going to probably find these online. But if, for whatever reason, you come across a vendor that's selling these, or you happen to find them online and on some obscure Turkish website I've never heard of, absolutely, I would recommend one of them. You will have to keep in mind it's going to be double the price of one of these, and more than double of one of these. But it, it definitely, it holds up in the quality, and it's a very nice using knife. Definitely one that I would pick for, again, outdoor lunches or any kind of even remote survival or bushcraft situation, although I rarely get into those. But nonetheless, thank you very much for watching. This has been the, I guess, a Turkish copy of an old bear. And yeah, very nice knife. And this has been the Knife Raven, as always, signing off. Goodbye.